when cryptos creak and tombstones quake, spooks arrive for this movie review of Haunted Mansion, so let's get cracking! Hello, my explorers, and welcome back to Lauren's Adventures Out There. And if you're new, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. My name is Lauren, and I'm with Castles, Capes, and Clones, where we discuss everything in the Disney universe. We talk Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, The Muppets, 20th Century, National Geographic, Disney Plus, Hulu, ABC, and more. So if you like that kind of content, We'd love it if you would subscribe to our channel, hit the bell for notifications, and do like this post, as it really does help us out with the algorithm. So before we start today's video, we wanted to say that without the labor of writers and actors, we would not be able to discuss Disney content like this without them. So we do support the 2023 WAG and SAG after strikes. So in this latest adaptation of Haunted Mansion, there was an adaptation 20 years ago with Eddie Murphy. This version has four ghost hunters who are trying to help a mother and her son who are seemingly trapped in a Louisiana mansion by the nefarious Hatbox Ghost, and they all have to try to figure out why this is happening before somebody is hurt. I'm just going to say it right off the bat, I love this version of Haunted Mansion. Now I am actually a fan of the Eddie Murphy version. I watch it every Halloween. I just think it's a fun, kind of creepy, funny movie. Not necessarily the best adaptation of Haunted Mansion, but I do find it fun. The thing with the Haunted, with the Eddie Murphy version, I think, is that they kind of made it into like a spooky comedy altogether, and it didn't really represent the Haunted Mansion in in, in its spirit. I want to say. Um, I think that this movie does a much better job in balancing both the comedy and the horror aspects of the film. Now this is a family friendly film. I, there are a lot of people who out there who were who are complaining that there was not a, enough horror. I don't know why people would expect Disney to put out an all-out horror film based on one of the most beloved Disney attractions. You know that there was going to be family-friendly aspects to this, and I think that director Justin Siemens did a great job in balancing all of these aspects. I thought that the cast was great. At first I was worried because you know, they had three big comedians that had very different styles of comedy. You have Tiffany Haddish, Owen Wilson, and uh, Danny DeVito. And would they all match up in this film? And I think that they do quite nicely. Uh, I think that they were a lot of fun. But for me, the standout is Lakeith Stanfield. I thought that he did a great job in conveying his character of Ben, a man who lost his wife, a man who went into the kind of ghost hunting business, uh, but then just lost all will for life after she died. And he may not have the comedy chops that the others do, although I do feel like he held his own with the rest of the cast. But there is a moment in the film, um, I, I won't tell you where or when, but I literally cried during his performance. 
I think that it was just so beautifully done and I was so moved by it. And I just thought that he was really uh, a great addition to this cast. Uh, also, Chase Dillon, who plays Travis, the son of Rosario Dawson's Gabby. Uh, he also uh, feels grief in this movie over the death of his father. And I think that he really, not only did, did he do well dramatically, but I thought he was quite funny with his facial reactions and just when he has to act scared. I thought that he was spot on. Like, I really enjoyed it. I, I could sense that from the, the trailers though. But what the film really does well are all the references and callbacks to the beloved attraction. Leota, Gracie, Constance, the hitchhiking ghost, and the hatbox ghost are all there. Even both versions of the Haunted Mansion are in the film. So fans of the attraction are really gonna like it. J.B. Lee Curtis, again, just shoots up the scenery, uh, getting to do comedy again. Uh, and yet at the same time is very much Leota. Jennifer Tilly, was fun in the Eddie Murphy version, but she wasn't mad at Rio to me. I felt like Jamie Lee Curtis captured the spirit of Madame Leota. But Jared Leto, who I know gets a lot of hate for some reason, I mean, I know that he's been in a couple films that have not been the greatest, but I don't dislike Jared Leto and whether you're a fan of his or not you're going to be okay with him because you really don't know that it's Jared Leto but he does give the kind of inflection and um, the feeling of the Hatbox Ghost and I like the fact that they gave him a backstory and it makes him even more compelling as the villain of this film. For families wanting to watch this film, like I said, it is a family-friendly film, but there are jump scares in this film, and I did jump, uh, and I'm used to watching horror movies. Now, I love to jump, so that might be a little bit of like, I'm just jumping into it, uh, but I think that you know, you should just proceed with caution. Know your child. If your child loves R.L. Stein, Goosebumps, I mean, I've seen some of those Goosebumps uh, episodes and they're just as equally terrifying as anything in this film. So they will definitely like it. If your child wants to start watching horror films, you might have them try it out. Um, I just say, again, know your child, but I don't think that there's anything so damaging that, um, you know, if you take your child to see this film, they'll never talk to you again. The only thing I would say that it could be slightly long, especially for young children, I, I didn't actually look at my watch at all, but I do know that it is over two hours and that there could have been about 15 to 20 minutes that could have been chopped out um, just kind of unnecessary things here and there um, but again I, you know I didn't mind it at all also for some reason the, they had these cameos that I didn't know were going to be in there uh, and I thought, wow, that's strangely short for them to be in the film. Now, that is what a cameo is, a short appearance in the film. But I, you know, like take for instance, Dan Levi, who is the genius behind Shit's Creek. Um, he was in it for 
maybe less than two minutes, which was crazy. Um, Mary Lou Henner was in it, and there were some others that I can't think of right now who were in it. Joe Coy was in it. Just like very, you know, just they were in it for very short periods of time. Um, to me, not enough to really enjoy them. Maybe Dan Levi's was, as a cameo, was good enough, but I don't know. Um, you know, that's just a quibble to me. So anyway, I think that Haunted Mansion is a hit, and I am willing to take the ride with this movie. I give this movie four out of five stars. What did you think of this movie? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed yourself today, we'd love it if you would subscribe to our channel, hit the bell for notification, do like this post, as it really does help us out. Visit us on all of our socials down below. Visit our website at www.castlestapesandclones.com and support the 2023 WAG and SAG after strikes. Thank you so much, and we will see you later. Bye!